Didn't see you there. Come with me to the south field. <clears throat> We're here. Is he even south? I don't know. I guess it depends where you're standing. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Oh, nice. I love my plants. But how does my garden grow? Follow along on Instagram to find out. So many seeds. Let's make a seed box. Every year we plant extensive gardens and start everything from seed. The result is a lot of seed packets all over the place. So it's about time I designed a storage solution to tackle the issue. Once I had the basic sketch hashed out, I switched over to Onshape and designed it digitally. An interesting design element that I'm incorporating is that each side of this is going to be cut out of a different thickness of material, ranging from half inch to eighth inch. I've never done that before with box joints and I figured this small project was a great opportunity to take a crack at it. Once I had this split into the cuts for each face, I imported the vectors into Lightbar and got the first cut going on the laser cutter on 8th inch plywood. I started with the quickest cuts, progressing to the cuts that'll take the longest. Alright, this next and final cut is in half inch material and one of the great things about the big lasers is that they can cut half inch material but it does take a bit longer. Oftentimes we just kind of speed through the laser cutting process but I just want to give a little bit of a sense that the eighth inch cuts and the quarter inch cuts uh, took maybe five minutes total where this one will take probably 30 minutes between the thickness and the engrave. So here's a half inch cut in real time, and here is an engrave in real time. Alright, enough of that. Let's speed this up again. My daughter Sarah actually designed the graphic that's being engraved on the front of these. I love adding in personal touches like that. And then I dry fit this together to make sure everything was fitting how it was supposed to. Oh no. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that one joint there and just make it a little narrower and then that should solve it. So it's only one little change and honestly I'll only need to recut the thicker plywood here. Then it'll be good to go. All right, let's go do it. I started by only cutting one side as a test cut, and since it worked, I went in and cut the other side to protect the surface of the walnut plywood from smudges during the engraved process. I'm adding some masking this time. With a big roll like this, it's important to fold the edges over so they aren't loose. Loose masking can catch on fire easily in the laser. The scraper I use to apply the masking is also fantastic for removing the masking from small areas of the design. If I were to redo this, the engraving on the seat portion of the design should have been darker, but I thought overall it looked pretty good, so for this one I left it as is. One of the three materials I'm using is proof grade material that is pre-finished. To get a good glue up, I need to remove its finish from the box joints by sanding it with a little help from some painter's tape. And then, I needed to sand a large section of what would become the lid, so I went in again with the painter's tape trick, but used a palm sander to go a bit faster. 
and I sanded the raw wood as well while I was at it to prep it all to eventually take finish. And then it was time to get this glued together. To speed things up, I used a few dots of CA glue with my wood glue and then sprayed activator on the section it was going to be up against. The CA glue bonds instantly on contact and serves as a clamp for the wood glue. And then I got a drop of wood glue onto each of my box joints and used painter's tape to clamp this together as it dried for about an hour. And break! With something like this where I have some pieces that are already pre-finished, I would normally do the finish before gluing it up, but I didn't think of that. So I'm not really sure how this is going to go. So I'm going to start by, I think, roughing up the pre-finished stuff with some sandpaper. And I'm going to start with the inside so I can see if it will look okay before doing the part that is supposed to look beautiful. Alright, so I just talked to Brooke and she reminded me that when she did her backpack, she had some trouble after sanding the proof grade material with whatever finish they use on here where it was still pooling. So I think instead of sanding, I'm just going to tape it off and then finish the rest of it like I normally would. It's kind of a pain in the neck, but I think it'll be way less of a pain in the neck. And I think the real lesson learned here is, is just finish the pieces when using mixed stuff before gluing it up. I'm going in with a satin wipe on poly here. This applies easily with a rag and I'm making sure I get the laser cut edges as well with finish. All right, first coat's on, I'm gonna let it dry and then off camera, I will probably do at least one more coat, if not two more coats, but basically just until it all looks even and I don't know where I was going with that. It's pretty easy, but a super functional project. I love seeds, what can I say? Now, obviously most people don't have access to a laser cutter that can tackle half inch material. I'm taking a minute to redesign this with a variation of material thicknesses in a way that is Glowforge friendly. Learned my lesson the first time. Unfinished birch this time. Almost forgot to focus at that time. Oops. Caught in. Lies. Eight inch. Baby, I'm perfect. On the Glowforge friendly version, I remembered to pre-finish my sides. And then these were finished and I could stash away all my extra seeds until next year. And the lid nicely rests on top. But obviously one box isn't enough. Thank goodness that I made four. Overall, I'm really happy with how this project came out. It was kind of a basic design concept, but the varying thicknesses and the contrasting wood colors, I think really bump it up a notch. 
I have a lot of seeds, so for me, seed boxes made sense, but it's also one that's pretty versatile because if you swap out that graphics, you can use these for whatever you want. There's a couple of different sizes that we did and they stack really nicely. All of these design files, all the iterations, the ones for the big laser with the half inch, as well as a set of the same boxes using quarter inch for the Glowforge are available over on makersworkshop.com. So if you want to give this project a try, head on over there. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time.